I'm so pleased that you are with us today to learn about this important topic. And I am going to start by introducing our presenters today, Stephanie Vogel and Brenda Munson. Um, Stephanie is a Medicare State Health Insurance Program Counselor with over 23 years of ex experience with the health insurance industry. She works with the North Dakota State Health Insurance Assistance Program, or the SHIP program, to help people understand Medicare and the different options available to them. She also advocates when people are having problems with, with their insurance and guides them on how to rectify their situations. Our other presenter is Brenda Munson. Brenda is a project manager and complex issue specialist with the North Dakota Senior Medicare Patrol at the North Dakota Center for Persons with Disabilities at Minot State University. She supervises all activities associated with Medicare fraud outreach and education and also assists beneficiaries with Medicare fraud related issues. Brenda has worked with Medicare fraud for the past 15 years. Welcome, Stephanie and Brenda. So glad to have you here with us. Glad to be here. Thank you. Yes, great. Um, I'm just going to remind her to everyone again that to please put your questions into the Q&A button there along the way as you think of them and we'll address them as, as many as we can at the end of the presentation. So with that, um, let's learn about Medicare open enrollment. So I'll turn it over to you, Stephanie. Thank you. Um, yes, I will be doing the Medicare open enrollment updates, um, what's going to be new for this year, and also um, comparing Medicare and Medicare Advantage. So we will get started here. Okay, so um, just a little bit about who we are. Um, North Dakota SHIP provides Medicare beneficiaries with free, unbiased information to assist in making an informed decision about Medicare plan options and coverage. SHIP staff is comprised of three full-time staff members, so that would be myself, my coworker, and our supervisor. And then we also have 25 volunteer counselors located across the state. Um, SHIP services are available to North Dakota residents at no cost. The SHIP program remains busy year-round, but we definitely have a noticeable peak during Medicare um, open enrollment, which is about to start next Tuesday on October 15th. Um, SHIP can also assist with other things, such as understanding your paperwork, bills, and statements. We can also help with the claims and appeals process with Medicare, Medicare Part D plans, Medicare Advantage, and then we also do long-term care insurance, and we can help people understand their claims, uh, file appeals and disputes with long-term care insurance companies as well. Um, so what are the parts of Medicare? So the Medicare parts are uh, Part A, which is hospital insurance, Part B, which is medical insurance, and then Part D, which is the Medicare drug coverage. So the Medicare options, uh, when you first enroll in Medicare, um, and during certain times of the year, you can choose how you get your Medicare coverage. There are two main, main ways to get Medicare. There's Original Medicare and then Medicare Advantage, which is, which is also known as Part C. Original Medicare includes coverage for Part A and Part B. If you want drug coverage, you can join a separate Medicare drug plan to get Medicare drug coverage, also known as Part D. You can use any doctor or hospital that takes Medicare anywhere in the U.S. To help pay your out-of-pocket costs in original Medicare, such as the 20% coinsurance, you can also shop for and buy supplemental coverage. This would include Medicare supplement insurance like the Medigap policies, or you can use coverage from a former employer or union or Medicaid. Um, just a note, Medigap policies only work with original Medicare. You cannot have a Medigap policy and also a Medicare Advantage plan at the same time. Uh, the other option is Medicare Advantage, also known as Part C, a Medicare approved, approved plan from a private company that offers an alternative to original Medicare for your health and usually drug coverage as well. These bundled plans include Part A, Part B, and usually Part D. 
These plans may have lower out-of-pocket costs than original Medicare, and in most cases, you'll need to use doctors who are in the plan's network. Plans sometimes called Plant Part C or MA plans are offered by Medicare-approved private companies that must follow rules set up by Medicare or CMS. If you join a Medicare Advantage plan, you'll still have Medicare, but you'll get your Part A and your Part B coverage from the Medicare Advantage plan, not original Medicare. In most cases, you'll need to use healthcare providers who participate in the plan's network. However, most plans will also offer out-of-network coverage. So to do some comparisons between original Medicare and Medicare Advantage, um, the first thing would be for doctors and hospital choices. Under original Medicare, you can go to any doctor or hospital that takes Medicare anywhere in the US. In most cases, you do not need a referral to see a specialist, and you also do not need, usually do not need prior authorization for most services that are, that are covered under Medicare. Under Medicare Advantage, in many cases, you can only use doctors and other providers who are in the plan's network and service areas for non-emergency care. Usually for emergency care, they would cover you regardless of where you went. Um, you will usually might need to get a referral to see a specialist outside of your primary care physician. And you may also need prior authorizations from your doctor before certain services will be covered by the plan. The other thing is you need to make sure that you choose a Medicare Advantage plan that is in your county and or zip code. If you move to a different county or zip code, you will need to change your Medicare Advantage plan to one that is located in that county and or zip code. So to compare the costs from Original Medicare versus Medicare Advantage, um, under Original Medicare, for Part B covered services, you usually pay a 20% coinsurance after you meet your deductible. You also pay the monthly premium for Part B, which currently for 2024 is 174.70. If you choose to join a Part D plan, you will pay a separate premium for your Part D drug coverage as well. There is no yearly limit on what you pay out of pocket unless you also have supplemental coverage. You can choose to buy a Medigap plan to help you pay your out-of-pocket costs that Medicare doesn't cover, like your 20% coinsurance, or you can use coverage from your current or former employer or Medicaid, if you qualify. Uh, for under Medicare Advantage, the out-of-pocket costs vary. Plans may have different out-of-pocket costs for certain services. You pay the monthly Part B premium and may also have to pay the plan's premium. Some plans do have a $0 monthly premium and may help pay all or part of your Part B premium. Most plans include Medicare Part D drug coverage. Plans have a yearly limit on what you pay for covered services, which is like the yearly out-of-pocket maximum that you would pay. Limits are different for in and out-of-network services, though. Once you reach your plan's limit, you will pay nothing else for the rest of the year under the Medicare medical part or hospital. You cannot buy a Medigap plan to cover your out-of-pocket costs. Like I said before, you can't have both Medigap and Medicare Advantage. In addition to premiums, there are other costs you pay. Um, so that would be like uh, certain, like you usually for Medicare Advantage plans, typically instead of paying um, a straight 20% coinsurance or the deductible, it's usually co-pays that they have assigned to each of the different um, services. So the various different services will have different co-pays, um, like office visits will have a co-pay, outpatient surgery will have a co-pay, inpatient hospital, et cetera. So next year for the annual Part B deductible, the, it will go up to $257 for 2025. And then again, after that, under original Medicare, Medicare would pay 80% and you would pay 20% coinsurance. However, for most preventative services, you do not have any out-of-pocket costs. So there's no coinsurance, deductible, or copays. Um, if you cannot afford to pay these costs, there are programs that may help, which I will discuss later in the presentation. So the other things that are in most states, except there are four counties that do not have these, the other health plans that are available are called Medicare cost plans. 
Um, they are not available in four counties, which are Burley, Morton, Stutzman, and Grand Forks County. All the other counties in the state have at least a couple of the Medicare cost plans. Um, for these plans, you can join even if you only have Part B. So for Medicare Advantage plans, you have to have both Part A and Part B to get one of those. But for the cost plan, you could, you could choose to only have Part B. Sometimes people do that if they have a if they don't qualify for free part a coverage then they would do part they would choose just part b so they don't have to pay the part a monthly premium if you have part a and part b and go to a non-network provider your services are covered under original medicare uh, they are so the medicare cost plans are a type of medicare health plan that's available in certain limited areas of the state um, if you have Part A and Part B and go to a non-network provider, the services are covered under original Medicare. So it's considered a hybrid plan because you have coverage through both the company that you choose your Medicare cost plan with, but then you can also have coverage for things that the Medicare cost plan does not cover and it would revert back to original Medicare. Um, you will pay, so if you do revert back to something that's covered under original Medicare, you would pay the Part A and Part B and or Part B coinsurance and deductibles. With the Medicare cost plans, you can join any time that the cost plan would accept new members. So there is not a specific open enrollment period for Medicare cost plans. As long as they're accepting new enrollees, then you can um, apply to enroll in that. You can also leave any time and return to original Medicare if you choose. And you can get your Medicare drug coverage from the cost plan if offered, or you can join a separate Medicare Part D drug plan. So but some of the Medicare cost plans include the Part D prescription plan, some do not. And this is the only type of plan where um, you can, aside from Medigap, where you can choose an outside supplemental like um, Part D prescription plan and not have to select the plan, the plan that also already includes Part D. Medicare Advantage plans, unless you have coverage through something like TRICARE or VA, you have to choose a Medicare Advantage plan that includes the Part D prescription plan with it. So the next thing that we'll talk about is Medicare Part D prescription drug coverage. It is optional. You can choose a plan and join. Um, however, there is a caveat when it says it's optional. Um, you may have a lifetime penalty if you join late. So that would mean that if you join outside of your initial enrollment period, which is usually either when you first turn 65 or when you first retire and lose coverage through, it, through yourself or spouse's employer-sponsored health plan. Medicare contracts with private insurance companies that offer the prescription drug plans to people with Medicare. Everyone with Medicare can get a prescription Medicare prescription drug plan by enrolling in one. Each plan has a formulary or list of covered drugs. The formulary for each plan must include a range of drugs in the most commonly prescribed categories. All Medicare drug plans generally must cover at least two, two drugs in each category of drugs, but plans can choose which specific drugs are covered in each category. Costs vary depending on the plan. Most people will pay a monthly premium for Medicare prescription drug coverage. You'll also pay a share of the cost of your prescriptions, including a deductible if the plan has one, co-payments and or co-insurance. If you have Medicare prescription drug coverage and a higher yearly income, you might also have to pay what is called Part D IRMA, which stands for Income Related Monthly Adjustment Amount. If you get a bill for a Part D IRMA, you pay this amount to Medicare and not your Part D plan. People with limited income and resources may be able to get what is called extra help paying for their Medicare drug plan costs, which I will go over a little bit later on in the presentation. So more on the Part D late enrollment penalty. If you choose not to join a Medicare drug plan at your first opportunity, you may have to pay a late enrollment penalty in addition to your regular monthly premium if you enroll 63 days after your initial enrollment period or later. So that would be after either you retire and lose coverage through your employer plan or after you first turn 65. If you had other creditable drug coverage or if you qualify for extra help, you won't have to pay a late enrollment penalty. So normally the late enrollment penalty is permanent or indefinite. 
unless you qualify for extra help. So if you did not have creditable drug coverage you and you have a late enrollment penalty, the only way that that would be waived is if in the future at one po some point you would qualify for extra help. The cost of the late en enrollment penalty will depend on the length of the time you don't have Part D coverage or other creditable prescription drug coverage. Medicare calculates the late enrollment penalty by multiplying 1% times the number of full uncovered months you didn't have Part D once you were eligible or other creditable drug coverage times the current national base beneficiary premium. So currently for 2024, it is $34.70. That is the national base premium, base beneficiary premium. For 2025, it will go up to $36.78. So that means that your penalty amount may change from year to year. So for instance, like right now, it basically what 1% means is that for every month that you should have had coverage but did not, you would basically pay just shy of 35 cents a month for every month that you did not have it. And your Medicare plan is required to tell you if you owe a penalty and what your payment will be. If you don't agree with your late enrollment penalty, you may be able to ask Medicare for a review or reconsideration. If you can, basically that would be if you have proof that you had other coverage or some other extenuating circumstance as to why you didn't enroll in Medicare when you were first eligible. Sometimes I've seen this happen where people um, are like this is usually for people that are under age 65 and qualify for Medicare due to disability. So they um, apply for Social Security disability income and some, you know, the review can sometimes take a significant period of time. I have seen where the review can take a year or more from the time when the people initially applied. And then once that once they're approved, they will actually be made retro. Um, their social security disability income payments will be retro to when they first applied. So if it's a year or even more than that, their disability payments will go beyond that. I've seen a few times where the person has actually, it's taken so long that they've actually now qualified for Medicare. So for a Medicare person that qualifies for Medicare that's under age 65 due to disability, you have to be receiving social security disability payments for at least 24 months. So as of the 25th month, you would qualify for Medicare. And when I've seen like the issue where someone didn't necessarily apply for Part D right away when they first became eligible, it's sometimes been because they didn't know they were even eligible yet for Medicare because they were still going through a review or appeals process with Social Security. And there's been a few other situations, but if you ever have questions about that, you can always call us and we can help you walk through that. Um, so Medicare open enrollment. If you already have Medicare and want to make changes to your Part D plan and or your Medicare Advantage plan, you can do this during this time. So we are about to start Medicare open enrollment. It runs October 15th through December 7th every year. And then your new coverage will begin as of January 1st of the following year. So you will start like whatever you like. If you choose a new plan during open enrollment this year, it will start January 1st next year. And then also for people who already have a Medicare Advantage plan, there is a separate open enrollment period that runs from January 1st through March 31st. So you already have to have a Medicare Advantage plan, and then you have a second chance to change your policy during those first three months of the year. So Medicare January 1st through March 31st. So there are some new plan changes to Medicare this year. Um, there are quite a few new changes to the Part D prescription plan. Um, the first one is the elimination of the coverage gap, or a lot of people know it as the donut hole. Medicare will eliminate the coverage gap in 2025, which will simplify coverage. Um, instead of having the coverage gap, there will be a new out-of-pocket maximum. Medicare will cap out-of-pocket costs for prescription drugs at $2,000 for 2025. So that means that the maximum that you would have to pay for any of your medications for the entire year would be $2,000. That would include the deductibles, the co-payments, and any co-insurance for any prescription drugs that are covered under your Part D plan. Um, the, sec the 
Second big thing is the Medicare Prescription Payment Plan. This was set into place by the Inflation Reduction Act. Um, it requires all Medicare prescription drug plans, including Medicare Advantage plans that include Part D coverage, to offer enrollees the option to pay out-of-pocket prescription drug costs in the form of monthly payments instead of all at once at the pharmacy. So this will be administered by the insurance company itself. It will not be done by the pharmacy when you pick up your medications. So to be clear though, the Medicare prescription payment plan, it's not like uh, an assistance program where it reduces your overall cost for your medications. Your overall cost would stay the same. It's just that if you have significant out-of-pocket costs for the year, you would be able to spread that out, out over the course of the 12 months or however many months there are left after you enroll in the payment plan. Um, and it will it can change. So if you do change medications during the year and you have new medications added later or some that are taken away, then it can change your overall cost of what you would pay every month um, instead. So there can be fluctuation in how much you will pay monthly and this, the one other thing is, is that it, this is not a good option for all people. So if you have pretty low cost um, prescription co prescription costs, like your medications, for instance, maybe cost you roughly $50 a month, it would probably not be a good um, idea to do the payment plan because the models that we have seen show that you actually start out paying less at the beginning of the year for those types of things and then pay more towards the end of the year because it's like an accumulation. The way that the payment plan is, is that it's an accumulation of what you start out. So if you owe $50 the for in the month of January, they might spread that $50 out over the rest of the year, but then you'll still continue to pay, have to pay $50 a month for your prescriptions. So you'll actually wind up owing more like October, November, December than you will at the beginning of the year. So that's also something to keep in mind, which before you enroll in the payment plan, you can see like what your payment, your payments will be based on the medications that you're currently taking. So obviously it can't predict if you have new medications in the future or if you stop taking some medications, but based on like when you look at the comparisons for the Part D plans, like if you do it yourself on Medicare.gov or if you call us or one of our partners um, to help you run your prescription plans, we will actually be able to show you based on the current prescriptions that you have at the time, how much your like payments are projected to be each month for the course of the year. The other a major change uh, for 2025 is the drug price negotiation. So that is going to be an ongoing thing for the next several years. Um, so currently for 2025, there were 15 medications, well, I should say, they actually say 10, but I believe it was 15, in 2024 were selected for negotiation um, to have reduced costs. Those costs will actually not go into effect until 2026. So there's a little bit of a gap between when the medications are chosen and when those reduced costs will be implemented. So they, this will continue every year. So 10 more drugs will be selected in 2025, and then those reduced costs will become available in 2027 and so on and so forth. The way that they choose the drugs is that CMS looks at which medications that they have been spending paying the most for over the course of like, you know, I'm not sure exactly how, what, like what time frame, but they looked at which medications CMS was paying the most for, including for people that have Medicare and also Medicaid. And then those were the first medications that were targeted. So they were some of the large, um, they're, most of them are obviously brand name drugs. Um, I did hear for people that are interested um, that some of the next drugs for the 2025 that will be selected are some of the high cost um, diabetes drugs. I don't believe Ozempic or those types of drugs are, but stuff like Jardiance, some of like a little bit older drugs like Jardiance and stuff like that are being targeted for reduced costs, which I know quite a few people who are diabetic do take Jardiance and some of the other medications that are in that category. A lot of the other medications are similar to um, some of the biologics and cancer treatment medications that are very expensive. 
and then this will continue to go every year. So as a whole, all of these initiatives were done based on the Inflation Reduction Act that was passed in 2023. So how to choose a plan. There are a few ways that you can do this. You can compare plans by computer or phone. Um, you can do, um, if you choose to do it yourself, you can do it on the Medicare plan finder, which is at medicare.gov slash plan dash compare. Or if you like if that one's a little bit trickier, you can also just go to medicare.gov and then choose the button that says find health and drug plans and then enter the information from there. Um, the other option is to call 1-800-MEDICARE. I will say, however, from the feedback that we get from people that call us, a lot of times when they call Medicare directly at the 1-800-MEDICARE, they usually will push them back to the SHIP program for their state um, because they are, it can be, it can take a good bit of time. And a lot of times the, med the people that answer at the national number for Medicare aren't as familiar with each of the plans available in those specific states. So a lot of times the people will tell them that they feel more comfortable having you contact your state SHIP program. And that's the other place where you can call, which is the ND SHIP program. That would be us. And for currently for open enrollment, we are taking appointments. So we are taking appointments now. Um, the appointments will not actually start until open enrollment starts on October 15th. And we do do the, all of those appointments over the phone. Some of our partners that we work with are able to do some in-person appointments in some of the locations across the state. Uh, for instance, like we do have locations in uh, Fargo, Grand Forks and Bismarck that will do some in-person appointments as well as a few of the other smaller regions are still able to do a few in-person appointments also. Um, so if you are interested, you can start giving us a call now and we can schedule appointments for you. Um, I know right now, um, as of right now, for us in the SHIP program, we're already scheduling out to the second week of, at the end of the second week of October. So we're looking at like the 24th, 25th, we're scheduled out that far. So we are starting to book up. So usually we tell people to schedule your appointment as soon as possible. Last year, we booked all of our appointments pretty far ahead, like significantly ahead of time. And we had appointments even like on Saturdays sometimes, um, up until the very last day of open enrollment, which is kind of unusual, but it's getting busier and busier, especially this year with some of the changes that are going on. Um, in order to join a Part D or Medicare Advantage plan, this would be like either during open enrollment or also during your initial enrollment period or special enrollment period if you qualify. You can also do that at the Medicare.gov website, um, find health and drug plans. You can call 1-800-MEDICARE. Your other option, if you are comfortable with this, is that you can, um, if you know a, the company you really want to go with, you can choose to uh, like sign up on their that specific company's website, or you can also choose to go with an agent. If you know an agent that you're comfortable with working with, you can have them review plans for you and sign up with them as well. And then uh, to speak to, I don't have a slide on this, but to speak to some of the changes that are going on specifically in our state uh, as far as Medicare Advantage plans, um, there are have been some issues with some of the Medicare Advantage plans in the last year and a half or so. Um, so if not, if everyone's not aware, um, the Medicare Advantage plans, if you, Sanford has announced that they will not be accepting any of the Humana Medicare Advantage plans for as of January 1st. And then Essentia has also announced that as of January 1st, they will not be accepting any of the Humana Medicare Advantage plans or any of the United Healthcare Medicare Advantage plans. So if anyone has either of those two plans and they have providers at either Sanford or Essentia, it would be a good idea to look at choosing a different plan. Or for instance, like if you have Humana, you could potentially choose to go to a different provider. I know that in most parts of the state, those are the two biggest providers. I know like in the Minot area, um, they also have Trinity. And then in the Grand Forks area, they have Altru. So some of the state, some parts of the state have other uh, pr provider options, but in a significant amount of the state, there are no other provider options outside of those. So it's a good idea to look at those, um, choosing a different plan because they are flat out not accepting that. 
Um, the other thing is, is that if anyone is considering and choosing a Medicare Advantage plan over Medigap, um, some facilities, specifically like Mayo Clinic in Rochester and the University of Minnesota facilities in the Twin Cities announced uh, about two years ago that they will not be accepting Medicare Advantage plans outside of their own specific area. So that means that if it's not a plan that's offered in the county in which those facilities are located, they will not accept the Medicare Advantage plan. So that affects some of our plans specifically, like some of the ones that are specific to North Dakota, like Align and Next Blue, usually are not accepted at all by Mayo or the University of Minnesota because they're not plans that they offer in their area. When this first went into effect, uh, they announced it in the fall of 2022, shortly before open enrollment that year. And it was kind of announced quietly. So, so some of it, we weren't really even aware of it as much. And then shortly into the new year in 2023, we did have people that called us and were finding out the hard way, unfortunately, that they had a Medicare Advantage plan and they were being referred for either a second opinion or treatment at Mayo and Mayo had specifically told them that they either had to agree to be self-pay, in which they had to sign a release statement saying that they would agree to be self-pay, or they had to contact the Medicare and revert to original Medicare. So you still have the option to revert to original Medicare. The problem with that is that typically you would have significantly higher out-of-pocket costs if you just have original Medicare because you would have to meet that annual deductible and then Medicare would pay 80% and you would have 20%, which that can be a quite a bit amount because original Medicare does not have an out-of-pocket maximum that you would have to meet. So your 20% would be indefinitely regardless of how much your coinsurance would be for that year. So that is something to keep in mind. Also, when considering whether or not to choose a Medicare Advantage plan versus something like original Medicare or for instance, Medigap, um, if you travel significantly or if you plan to live in a different state at least part of the year, it can be easier to have a Medigap plan because you don't have to worry about whether or not your providers are in network. So if you live in a different state or you're traveling in a different state and you plan on seeking non-emergency medical care in that other area, you have to like if you have a Medicare Advantage plan, you have to make sure that the providers are in network with that plan or it might not be covered at all or you could have significantly higher out-of-pocket costs. Um, also, if you live in a different state part of the year, the same thing is true. You don't have to worry about uh, whether or not the providers in that other area are in network. As long as they accept Medicare, they would also accept your Medigap plan if you have one. So that is something to keep in mind. The other thing is if you travel internationally, there are the Medigap plan does have some coverage for international travel. It will cover 80% um, of your costs up to a lifetime max of $50,000. Uh, if you do not have a Medigap plan, Medi none of the other Medicare plans, including original Medicare or Medicare Advantage, cover um, any type of international travel, except for very limited amounts along the U.S. border. And when I say limited, it usually means because, for instance, like on the northern border with us, it would be, for instance, like if you are traveling from Alaska to the contiguous U.S. and something happens to you along the way, like let's say in British Columbia, you're traveling through British Columbia to get to, you know, the U.S., something happens, it will cover services in that area. Um, along the southern border, it can also be true to a lesser extent. For instance, if you have an emergency and it's quicker, like the shorter distance is to a facility across the border in Mexico versus going to a facility in the U.S., it can cover you that way. But it's very limited and it's very specific, so it's harder to get coverage through original Medicare, even along the borders like that. Some people think that if they live in a border community, like for instance, on the northern border here, you live along the Canadian border, that you can go across the border to Canada and get treatment. That is not usually the case unless it would be like an emergency or you would be traveling into the US. So some things to consider when selecting a Part D plan. Um, you would wanna consider, does the plan cover all the medications that you take? 
Does the plan have restrictions on your drugs? So that means that sometimes the plans require what they call step therapy or prior authorization. So step therapy means that they require you to take a different one or more other medication in a different class of medications that is usually less costly than, you know, the one that you might be looking originally like currently taking. This is especially true for some of the new medications that have been that have come out um, and the new classes of medications. Um, and then the other thing is, is that some medications require prior authorization regardless, where you have to get prior authorization, basically meaning, which means that you meet the medical necessity criteria, like as, you know, like what FDA outlines as to why that medication is being prescribed. Um, you would also want to consider how much will I pay for your monthly premiums and drug costs, how much each medication will cost you. And is your pharmacy in the plan's preferred network? So what that means is that uh, there are three tiers of pharmacies for every plan, but not every plan has the same pharmacies in those tiers. So uh, there is the out-of-network pharmacies, which means that you would pay for the full cost of all of your prescriptions. There would be no coverage for your prescriptions if you used an out-of-network pharmacy. The middle tier is in-network. So they're in-network with, the with the plan, and there is coverage, um, but not necessarily the cheapest, like the, it would not necessarily be the cheapest cost for you. The least cost most of the time is a, a pharmacy that's considered part of the preferred network, which we you can see that. So like if you contact us and you have us review your plans, we are able to see that. So are we, we are able to look at that. And that's one thing that we do when we do um, plan comparisons for people we ask them which like pharmacy you prefer or which one you currently go to but we also will compare at least two or three other pharmacies in your area to see if there is lower costs because even among the plant um, pharmacies that are considered just in network or even preferred there are some pharmacies that are still cheaper and that's what it has to do with um, negotiations that those specific pharmacies have made with the plan directly in order to offer lower costs for them. I have seen typically the cheapest pharmacies are the ones that are the largest, like Thrifty White, CVS, things like that. However, I have seen some, in, especially in some of the smaller towns, I have seen some of the small local pharmacies that have been able to beat those um, prices. Usually the small local pharmacies are I would say very rarely I have seen them to be considered a preferred pharmacy. It's pretty much always the large pharmacies that are considered preferred. But like I said, it, it's worth looking at some of the other pharmacies because not always is the preferred pharmacy going to be the cheapest option. And then your other thing is to look at if your prescription can be filled by mail order. So mail order is an option. Pretty much all of the Part D prescription plans do offer their own mail order company that you can choose to sign up for. I know like in the last few years, people have gone away from that, especially like in some of our more rural areas, because as we all know, mail has not been as reliable as it was in the past. So it can take much longer to get your medications. Things to consider before choosing a Medicare Advantage plan. Um, it would be how much are the premiums, deductible, and coinsurance or copay amounts. So those those are quite a few. There's like some different um, levels for each of the different services, which you can compare and see. Um, what is the annual out-of-pocket cost for the plan? So that would be the maximum out-of-pocket that you would have to pay for the whole year for your medical and hospital services. What service area does the plan cover? So that's kind of what I touched on with um, whether or not um, some providers like Mayo will accept that uh, plan or not. Um, are my doctors and hospitals in the plan's network? So some plans do have out-of-network coverage. Some of them are the same for certain things, but some of them are different where even if they have out-of-network coverage, you would usually pay more um, versus using an in-network provider. And this goes to, again, with like the thing with Mayo, some hospitals and doctors will flat out not accept that plan. So it's not only that they are not in network with them, they just will not even accept that plan. So if you have that plan, they like, for instance, like I said with Mayo, will tell you that you, if you want to be treated there, that you either have to agree to self-pay or revert back to original Medicare. So that's also something to consider on whether or not that, and that's the same thing that's going to be true now with Humana, uh, with Sanford, 
and then also with Essentia and United Healthcare. Um, it's not just that they're out of going to be out of network; they're not going to be accepting that. So if you go to one of those facilities with one of those plans, they will not accept it, and most likely they would require you to sign a similar form to like what Mayo has, agreeing to be self-pay or change your plan entirely. And then the other thing to consider is does the plan cover additional benefits that are not covered by original Medicare? So that means which Medicare Advantage is the, the only Medicare based plan that covers vision, dental and hearing services to various different degrees. So um, most, if not all of the Medicare Advantage plans cover vision, dental and hearing, but they all vary greatly, even among like, for instance, the zero dollar monthly premium plans. Pretty much every company offers at least one zero dollar monthly premium plan, but even among those, the coverages are quite different. So they like if people are interested in coverage for vision, dental and hearing, they usually have a maximum dollar amount that they pay for, which is the max that they'll pay for for those specific services over the course of the year. Um, they vary greatly between plans. They don't release those publicly, so we can't see them. You won't be able to see them if you use the Medicare plan finder online. But if that is something that you're interested in and is very important to you, you can actually call the company directly and they will tell you. They actually have to tell you what those coverages are over the phone before you decide to enroll, if that's something that you're interested in. The other thing that is frequent that a lot of plans cover is a lot of them have gym membership reimbursements. And then also they have what's called over the counter. So United Healthcare specifically has a thing called a U card where they send you a card in the mail that you can use at certain locations, certain places. And it's like basically like a debit card. So you can use that to buy over the counter supplies and supplements and vitamins. So it's not just like supplements or vitamins. You can also use it to buy other over the counter like things. Um, that are typically covered by an HSA or a flex spending account. So that would include like Band-Aids, um, first aid supplies, incontinent supplies, things like that. Um, so a lot of the plans do include that, which if you use the Medicare plan finder yourself, you can see if that's something that's covered. They also don't release publicly how much they cover. If you call them and ask them, they will tell you. They usually have a specific dollar amount that they will give you each quarter to use. So every like, you know, January through March, et cetera, you would have a certain dollar amount that you could use during those quarters. If you don't use it during that quarter, they typically don't, that amount does not carry over to the next quarter. And then let's see, what are the rules that I must follow to access healthcare services and drugs? So that means like, do you need a referral or a prior authorization? This is something to keep in mind. Um, there are uh, some of the Medicare Advantage plans require more prior authorizations for services than uh, original Medicare, for instance. Um, usually it comes into play with more advanced things like advanced imaging, like MRI or CT scans. They typically require prior authorizations for that before they would cover it. Um, sometimes, you know, you, you're basically your provider would be the one that would do the prior authorization requests for you because they would typically have to provide medical records to the plan to prove why you're having this specific service done. So then uh, the next thing we will look at is the help that's available for people with limited income and resources. Um, and this will be to help pay your healthcare and or drug costs. These include the Medicare Savings Program, Extra Help, and Medicaid. You should apply for these programs if you have limited income and or resources, or you have medical expenses that exceed your available income and resources. Even if you aren't sure that you qualify, you should still apply because there are some things that they can take into consideration as far as like discounting like some parts of the income, especially when it comes to Medicaid. Medicare Savings Program. Uh, this is the program that provides help from the state paying for Medicare costs, which could include the Medicare premiums, deductibles, coinsurance, and copayments. It often has higher income and resource guidelines than full Medicaid. You can apply for the Medicare Savings Program through the Department of Health and Human Services or at your local Medicaid office, which would be the Social Services office. For extra help, this program helps people with limited income and resources with the costs of Medicare drug coverage. It's also called the low income subsidy. Some people with Medicare must apply for extra help 
However, some people, uh, for instance, people who already are on Medicaid will automatically be enrolled in extra help as well. So if you are on Medicaid before you even start Medicare, for instance, if you have Medicare due to disability or even when you turn 65 and you already have Medicaid at that time, you will automatically be enrolled in extra help. You don't have to apply for that separately. Um, if you do have to apply and you don't, you don't fall into one of the automatic um, situations, you can apply by filling out a paper application through Social Security, applying online at ssa.gov, or by contacting your local Social Security office. So yes, um, that's the thing. Medicare Savings Program is administered by the Department of Health and Human Services. So basically social services, the same place that does Medicaid. And then, but extra help is administered by the Social Security Administration. And Medicaid is the program that helps pay medical costs for some people with limited income and resources. It offers benefits not normally covered by Medicare, such as nursing home care and personal care services. It's jointly funded by the federal and state governments and is administered by the State Department of Health and Human Services. So that can be, and there are different levels of Medicaid. So it depends on like what level you qualify for. Um, there are specific, like a different level for people who are considered elderly or disabled. They have higher income and resource limit, limits than straight Medicaid. And the same is true for people who need Medicaid because they are in an assisted living facility or in a nursing home. There are different guidelines for that. So even if you think that you might not qualify for Medicaid because of income or assets, but you are going to have to go into an assisted living facility or you have a loved one that will be going into an assisted living facility or nursing home, it might be worth looking into Medicaid anyway because they have different guidelines as far as assets and income when it comes to long-term care stuff like that. So for the Medicare Savings Program, it assists individuals with Medicare insurance costs for people with limited income. It may pay for monthly Medicare premiums, annual deductibles, and coinsurance costs. The limits do change every year. They usually don't release the limits until, and I don't know why, but after the actual beginning of the year. So it's usually not until March or so when we actually get the new income and asset limits for the Medicare Savings Program and the same thing for extra help. Um, so there are a few different levels that we'll go over for the Medicare, sa Medicare Savings Program. The top tier level is what's called QMB, Qualified Medicare Beneficiary. This one will help pay for your Part A premiums if you have to pay a Part A premium. It will pay your Part B premium all of your deductibles for both Part A and B, and all of your co-insurance and co-pays for both Part A and B. Um, the, currently, the 2024 monthly income limit for an individual is $1,275. For a married couple, it's $1,724. And then for resource limits or asset limits, it is $9,430 for individuals and $14,130 for married couples. So the asset limits stay the same for all of the levels of Medicare Savings Program. It's just the income limit that will change for that. So the second level is called SLMB, SLMB, or the Specified Low Income Medicare Beneficiary Program. This one specifically pays for your Part B premiums. You have to have both Part A and Part B to qualify for that program. Um, so it would only pay for the Part B premium. The monthly income limit for an individual on that is $1,526. And for a married couple, it's $2,064. Uh, the third tier is qu called QI, Qualifying Individual. This will also just pay the Part B monthly premium, but you also have to have both Part A and Part B. The monthly income limit on that for an individual is $1,715. And for a married couple, it's $2,320. Uh, the last tier would be Qualifying Disabled Working Individual Program. So this is for people specifically that are like that receive Medicare due to disability, but are still actually working part time. Um, you may qualify if you have a disability and are working and you lost your Social Security disability benefits. So there are some very specific guidelines for this specific one. This one will help pay for a Part A monthly premium only. Um, because once you don't qualify for Social Security disability, you usually have to pay a Part, e, Part A monthly premium. The income limits for an individual on that are $5,105 per month, and for a married couple, $6,899. This is the only one that has different resource limits. So for an individual, 
it has four thousand dollars re asset limit and six thousand dollars for a married couple And then for the extra help program, this is a federal program that helps pay for some or most of the out-of-pocket costs of Medicare prescription drug coverage. It is administered, like I said, by Social Security. It is also known as the Part D Low Income Subsidy, or LIS. It will help pay for your Part D monthly premium, and it can lower the cost of your prescription drugs. So there are flat rates, like flat copay rates, if you qualify for extra help that it will pay. And it can it only pays up to a certain amount for the Part D monthly premium. So for people who have a Part D plan who has a much higher monthly premium, it will only pay up to the maximum that they allow. Currently, it's about just about $40 a month that they will pay for. So if you have a Part D plan that is more than that, it will pay up to that amount, but then you would still have to pay the difference. Um, this does qualify you for a special enrollment period once per quarter for the first nine months of the year to switch between plans. So you will have a special enrollment period. That's also true of when you first become eligible for extra help. So if you apply anytime during the year and you become eligible for extra help, that gives you a special enrollment period to change your Part D prescription plan. And then you would also have you be able to change your Part D prescription plan once every quarter for the first nine months of the year. It will also, like I said earlier, will eliminate the Part D late enrollment penalty if you did have one. Um, currently for 2024, the income limit for an individual is 22,590 yearly, or as, uh, let me see, I can break that out for you. Uh, monthly, it is 1,903 per month for an individual. And for a couple, the yearly income would be 30,660, or monthly that would be 2,575. And then for the asset limit for an individual, it's 17,220. And for a married couple, it would be 34,360. Just one caveat to that, um, extra help does not include as part of your assets. It does not include if you own a home that you live in or like a vehicle that you and or your spouse drives. That doesn't mean that if you have five vehicles that it would like exclude all of those. It would cover, like basically it allows a vehicle for each, like both you and your spouse. But if you have more than those two vehicles, those would be considered assets. Um, and then for, it also doesn't include some burial, like prepaid burial plans as well. Um, for costs for 2024, so if you qualify for extra help, um, your co-pays for generic medications would be $4.50 a month. And then for any brand name medications, it would be $11.20 a month. This is different if you qualify for QMB, Medicare Savings Program, the top tier, or if you qualify for Medicaid. It actually reduces, if you qualify for those, it would reduce your copays for generic medications to $1.55 per month. And then for brand name medications, it would reduce it to $4.60 per month. Um, so then Medicaid, Medicaid is a federal and state program that provides health coverage for certain people with limited income and assets. Medicaid, since the insurance department does not administer Medicaid, I don't have specifics on how they determine asset and income limits. And I know they vary across the different groups of people. They have different things, like for instance, they have different qualifications for like an adult who qualifies for Medicaid, and then they have different qualifications for children who qualify for Medicaid, and then also for people who are considered elderly or disabled, and then they have their separate program for long-term care. So if you think that you might need these services or that you might qualify, it's definitely a good idea to um, check to see if you qualify because they do also have some things that they consider that they don't count as far as assets and income. Um, if you are eligible for both Medicare and Medicaid, you are considered what's duly eligible and can enroll in both. So you can have both programs. Um, also, um, to speak to that, there are specific Medicare Advantage plans for people who are duly eligible. They are called DSNP, so it's dual special needs plans. Um, so if you are looking at a Medicare Advantage plan um, to have that in addition to your Medicare and Medicaid, there are specific plans for people who are enrolled in both. Um, Medicaid will cover services that Medicare does not, like some services that Medicare does not, like long-term care, 
and they can also pick up Medicare's out-of-pocket costs. So typically, if you qualify for a full Medicaid coverage, you it would pay for your Medicare deductibles, your Medicare co-insurances, and co-payments. Um, however, there are in instances where people can qualify for Medicaid but not have full Medicaid coverage where they would have what is called um, client share or recipient liability, which means, and that is determined by Medicaid, um, they have a very specific kind of complicated um, algorithm, like a like a process as to how they determine people's client share. Um, but basically, that means that if you are one of those people who qualify for Medicaid, but have a client share, you would have to pay a certain amount of your medical costs out of pocket each month first before Medicaid would pick up what's left over from Medicare. Um, these are some of the helpful resources. Uh, there are uh, like different links for our different programs and um, different websites, including our own. And if anyone needs those, we can, I believe we can have those uh, sent out or they will be available publicly for you. And then this is our contact information. So um, the best way to contact us is if you are, if, unless you're um, internet savvy, is by phone, um, our toll-free number, 888-575-6611, or you can call our local number, 701-328-2440, and we are option one. That is how you get directly to the SHIP program. And then um, we do have, we, you can reach us on our website or by email as well. And so that would be uh, the Medicare Advantage and open enrollment information for you. So I am, this is Brenda, and I will speak to the um, Senior Medicare Patrol program in the state of North Dakota. Um, just wanted to let, first of all, thank um, North Dakota Extension Service for putting this collaborative effort together. Um, I think there's a lot of good information um, that is available for, for individuals. And um, uh, Stephanie, you did a fantastic job. So speaking a little bit about the Medicare Patrol program. So we are a statewide program and um, it's we're located on the campus of Minot State University uh, under the umbrella of the North Dakota Center for Persons with Disabilities. So SMP provides services to Medicare beneficiaries throughout the whole state. We're considered a statewide program because of the federal funding that we receive. The mission of the National S&P program is to empower and assist Medicare beneficiaries, their families and caregivers to prevent Medicare fraud through outreach, counseling and education. The S&P programs build community partnerships, not only working together with the Medicare beneficiary, um, but also to preserve the integrity of the Medicare program. We all want to see Medicare around for when we retire for our children. We, we want to make sure that that's a solvent program. There are S&P programs um, located in every one of the 50 states, plus the District of Columbia, Guam, Puerto Rico, and the U.S. Virgin Islands. So there's help out there in other states um, for this as well. The S&P mes message is to protect, detect, and report. Next slide, please. So just to reiterate, Medicare fraud is insurance fraud, and it needs to be reported. Next slide. I want to talk a little bit about why are why the older adults are targets for con artists. Well, for starters, they assume that um, we all have, you know, as retirees, we all have significant saving accounts and access to dollars. Older the older adults also exhibit greater trust. You, I, I come from an era where um, the generation believed a handshake was sufficient to tie a deal or we just had a lot of trust in other individuals. Many seniors are less familiar with, with um, digital technology. It's, it's, it's fast moving, things are changing consistently. It's hard to stay up with all of that technology unless you work with it every day. And fraudsters take advantage of that. Um, also, we, you know, we wanna maintain an independence. That's, that's a, a big concern for a lot of seniors. They wanna be able to age out in their home, live out in their home. Um, and they don't want someone to think that, oh gosh, they've been scammed and now mom and dad can't take, their, take care of their own finances. Um, also, age-related vulnerabilities and reliance on others can definitely be exploited, and that can be caregivers. Caregivers and family members absolutely can be perpetrators as well. Um, social isolation may 
may make seniors more susceptible to scams. And we found that a lot during um, COVID, um, a lot of those individuals, they didn't get out of the house. And so therefore, when the phone rang and we have this nice person that starts asking questions and personal questions, and before you know it, they've given out personal finance information and the names of their kids and just because they were socially isolated and it was nice to have someone to talk to. Next slide, please. So a little bit about the anatomy of a scam, how it actually takes place. So scammers typically use seven strategies to undermine their victim's reasoning and judgment. One of them is to establish camaraderie. You know, they're the good guy. Um, you know, they ask, you know, how are you doing? Are, are you feeling okay? What's your weather like? Um, what do you like to do for hobbies? Do you get out of the house much? They're going to establish that kind of camaraderie. Um, or they will use a scare tactic like don't lose this opportunity, um, especially when individuals get illicit marketing calls about um, different um, like Medicare plans, especially during this open enrollment time, they'll say, if you don't take advantage of this opportunity right now, you're not going to have it again, or you may even lose benefits um, and lose some of your health care benefits if you don't act now. Flattery. Flattery is another big one. Um, who doesn't like to have their ego stroked? Um, a lot of times they will talk fast and make the victim feel anxious, like they have to make a decision right now, rather than allowing you time to think about it and give them an answer later. They create terror, like the, it's like the end of the world feeling that they, they don't have any other options. They're also very good at seduction and intimidation. A lot of times we hear from the people that have been scammed is that they say this person will be so nice when they first get on the phone. And as you know, the beneficiary starts to pull back and starts to question, they get very intimidating and they actually can get very um, like very vulgar with them and call them names and um, actually create that terror um, within that individual. Next slide, please. I want to talk about some of the scams that we see that we hear from other states and, and scams that we see around the state that are emerging fraud trends. One of them that is never, ever going to go away is the new Medicare card scams. This, this kind of cycles around. Scammers may call, they may email, or they can even show up at someone's door unannounced. They may already know the individual's name, their address, their date of birth. A lot of times they know the doctor's name and they know other personal information that makes them appear credible. They do a lot of snooping on the internet, on Facebook, if there's any of that information out there as far as like, you know, grandkids or kids, they will tie into that information when they get, when they get the individual on the phone. Um, when, when they are calling individuals, their biggest thing is that they say, Medicare wants to send you out a new card. I just need you to verify your Medicare number. And they'll say they're calling from Medicare. Um, sometimes they might even ask for other personal information besides the Medicare number. Um, Medicare is not issuing new cards. In 2018, Medicare did a big revision of the numbers on Medicare cards. They took off the Social Security numbers and gave everybody an alleged 11 number um, identifier. It's numbers and letters, and I don't know mine. I, it's not something that I can even memorize. But believe it or not, the scam artists can get that information. Um, you know, they also might entice the individual by saying that they're sending out a new card, but there's going to be a gift card included with it. And they just, again, need them to verify their Medicare number. So if Medicare is truly calling an individual, they are never going to ask for their Medicare number because they have got their Medicare number. Plus, on top of that, Medicare doesn't usually call individuals. Medicare is so busy putting out fires and trying to take care of the other day-to-day -day things that go on within Medicare. They don't have time to call and say, oh, I've got a free gift for you if you verify your Medicare number and I'm going to send you a new plastic Medicare card. 
Um, so just remember that, um, you know, don't fall for it. Medicare will never contact a beneficiary unless that beneficiary has reached out to them, first of all, and left a message. And they're not going to ask them to verify that information. Um, Medicare open enrollment, enrollment scams. And so we are seeing an uptick in this now because with open enrollment starting October 15th, people are starting to get calls about plans that are available to them. Medicare Advantage plans, Part D prescription drug plans. Um, the, you know, and this is the time of the year when Medicare beneficiaries get to evaluate their current coverage and then make changes to, you know, original Medicare Part D um, or their Medicare Advantage plans. So scammers are ready to swoop in. They pretend to be very helpful. They'll say, I'm calling for Medicare and I'm here to help you. But really what they want is they want that Medicare's um, beneficiaries, they want his Medicare number um, or other personal information. And what they do with that, um, with that information, with that Medicare number is they will bill out services under that person's Medicare number, services that the beneficiary never received. And we see a lot of it. Um, recently, we had an individual um, that called, he had been billed out when he got his Medicare summary notice, his daughter saw that he had been billed out over $14,000 for um, uh, urinary catheter devices. The, you know, in light of that, the person didn't even have a catheter, but he was billed out like weekly charges for this urinary catheter devices. And so, if people don't take a don't take a look at those Medicare summary notices. That is where a lot of the fraud appears. And this gentleman, believe it or not, had been scammed previously. I've got one that I'm working with too. He called. He said, "I gave up my Medicare number. I know better." He said, "It happened a year ago. I got a new Medicare number. Now I think I need another new number." Um, it was for some kind of diabetic devices, and so. Um, we work with the individuals then and, and try to, you know, get them a new Medicare number and make sure that we can, you know, watch to make sure that there's not any fraudulent building, uh, billing underneath that Medicare number. Another fraud that's big right now, and it's not so big here in the state of North Dakota, but nationally it is huge, is hospice fraud. Scammers are trying to get beneficiaries to agree to hospice, even if they do not qualify for the benefit. So they use, you know, high pressure tactics to get people to sign up for hospice. Um, the agency falsely certifies or does not obtain certification for those plans of care. And someone is, you know, usually falsely certifies as terminally ill, even if they are not. So the beneficiary receives, you know, inadequate or incomplete services. For example, no, they have to have skilled visits and they require those like so many times a week. And they also have to have like doctor's documentation. Um, it falls out a lot of times when that documentation doesn't come through. But it is um, and they can bill out high, high dollars for that hospice fraud and get away with it before it actually gets um, turned in. Next um, slide, please. So some ways that to support SMP, you know, we need your help warning uh, beneficiaries about the scams. Um, you can be an advocate for us, believe it or not, you are the eyes and ears of the community. Uh, beneficiaries are going to share information with you that they may not even share with their family members. It's very embarrassing, family members or even friends. It's very embarrassing to tell somebody that you've been, you know, scammed for dollars, any kind of dollars or given out information. Um, I don't want my children to think that I'm not capable of taking care of my own finances. And so therefore, I'm probably not going to tell them that. But it might come up in some conversation with, um, you know, with different agents, different agencies, and even with, you know, other, other, you know, friends that that might that you might have a, you know, camaraderie with. Um, if you think, you know, the best information I give is it can give you is to listen and be aware. If someone is sharing that they have been scammed, remind them that they are not alone. Um, that it, and it's important that these get reported to authorities because we can't do anything about it unless we unless we get those things reported. Um, if you think someone's been a victim of Medicare fraud, encourage them to contact SMP. Even if it's not, um, we can talk it through. We can help guide them. 
Um, and it may not even be a Medicare or a health care fraud, but maybe it is more of a financial. We can direct them to the Attorney General's office. We work very closely with the Attorney General's office here in North Dakota. They refer Medicare and health insurance scams to us, and we in turn report financial fraud to them. Um, they are better suited to handle that. So, um, you know, like I said, again, beneficiaries may often share information with you or, um, you know, like a caregiver or whatever that, but they will not share with like a personal family member or, or a very close friend. Next slide, please. So we have a couple of things in place that I'm, I would like to encourage people to be a part of. We have a North Dakota SMP app. It is free. It um, Every month I put on, I, I write a scam of the month fact sheet every month about different kinds of fraud or preventing fraud, um, some of those hot trends that are going on. I get that posted on there every month. We have resources for seniors. There is a calendar on there. There's also an event calendar of upcoming S&P events that we will be at. And then we have news and alerts. So if I get a notification from like the Federal Trade Commission, or if I get notification from the National S&P office that there is this trend just hit the market, I will put that out on that S&P app. Um, you can go into the App Store and just look under NDSMP, and I would encourage you to download that app if you're at all interested in being, you know, having that information at your fingertips. Next slide, please. One more thing that I want to put a plug in for is that we, um, in 2022, SMP received some additional funding to support diversity and equity and inclusion in our existing state program. And so with those funding dollars, what we did is we developed the Your Guide to Medicare and Common Medicare Scam Handbook. It's written in plain language, which means that it is written at a fifth or sixth grade level. As we age, things get more difficult to comprehend. And we also work with a lot of people that are on Medicare due to disability. So we are trying to make that reading material um, as, as easy for them to understand as possible. This handbook is intended to be disseminated to Medicare beneficiaries throughout the state to reach those in, especially in rural and underserved counties with the focus on people with disabilities and those who are low income. And so, um, you know, we, we would ask if anybody's interested in disseminating those handbooks for us, we would be willing to mail them out to you, drop them off um, at a location. Um, if you want one just for yourself or for a family member, say your mom and dad, we can mail that out individually as well. Um, and my last slide, please. So my contact information is through um, the telephone number is 858-4477. The toll-free number, and that's a, a dedicated toll-free number, it comes directly into our offices here. It is 1-833-818-0029, or you can reach us through ndcpd.org slash SMP. Um, we have a website as well as an email address. And also, we um, I post to Facebook twice a week, usually on Fridays and Mondays. And so like us on Facebook, I also include, I will share scam information that comes from the National SMP office, or again, if there's something that comes through from a scam alert from the Attorney General's office or from the Federal Trade Commission, um, I try to keep that as up to date as possible. Um, again, there's fraud prevention information on there. A lot of times I'll share my uh, scam of the month fact sheet on there. Um, just it'll it's just information again that's available for individuals just try to stay on top of the scams that are out there because it is it is it's just it's like a wildfire it is it just goes on and on and they cycle through you you just we notice with the scams it cycles through now it's open enrollment time in january it's going to be new medicare card time so you can kind of see those cycle through the different times of the years so just want everybody to be aware that there is a lot of fraud out there and a lot of it that is associated just with health care and medicare Thank you again. I appreciate your time and sitting in and listening to this presentation. And I guess I'll turn it over to Jane now so that she can uh, open it up for, to the questions and answers. Thank you. Thank you, Brenda. Thank you, Stephanie. That has just been a wealth of information. And as you can imagine, there's been a few questions that have uh, people have uh, 
typed in and I'll share those with you. But uh, for those of you who are on, if you do have some questions, make sure to use the question and answer button and we'll we'll try to get them to them because uh, we do have a few minutes to do that right now. Um, as you can imagine, there are several questions around Medicare Advantage plans and I think three are kind of related. So I'll just um, give them all to you at once. It says, you don't have to have an Advantage plan, correct? So that's that's one of them. And the other one is, if you are on an Advantage plan, can you switch back to original Medicare? And then in that same um, vein, can Medicare beneficiaries change their Medicare Advantage plans through March 31st? So if you can just speak to those things too, I think sure. that would be probably Stephanie's sure. um, area. Great, thank you. So you do not have to have a Medicare Advantage plan. That's just an option for you to help like reduce your out-of-pocket costs among, you know, like the other options with the cost plans or a Medigap plan. Um, and then as far as, um, oh, but you said uh, original Medicare. Yes, you can revert back to original Medicare. Um, you can switch, like during open enrollment, you can switch back to original Medicare if you want. It's much more difficult to switch from Medicare Advantage to a Medigap plan. So we usually advise people that, uh, especially if you're just retiring or you're just turning 65, um, that to look consider all of your options and decide if you would rather have a Medigap plan. You do have a 12-month trial the first time you enroll in a Medicare Advantage plan. So um, if you enroll in a Medicare Advantage plan for the first time, either right when you first retire or turn 65 or sometime later on. Um, and let's say you had later on, if you had a Medigap plan to begin with, you'll have a 12 month trial period to ch decide if you like the Medicare Advantage plan or not. Um, the caveat to that is that they call it a 12 month trial period, but in reality, if you decide that you don't like the Medicare Advantage plan, you have to switch your plan back before the end of the 11th month that you've had it because of the fact that the new plan takes effect like a following month. So like we've had some people that literally wait until the 12 months and then they actually can't change back because it would actually be the 13th month when they go back to that next to the new pl next plan. Um, so keep that in mind um, because Medigap, which I didn't say earlier, but Medigap uh, does have what's called guaranteed issue rights for people when they first turn 65 or when they first retire, which means that regardless of your health conditions, you are able to enroll in one of those plans and they have to accept you. Once you're outside your initial enrollment period, which is the first six months of your retirement or turning 65, once you're outside that time frame, you will have to go through medical underwriting, which means typically they'll, like if you call a company directly, they'll have a medical questionnaire that they ask you over the phone. Depending on how you answer those questions, um, they might, depending on the situation, request your medical records to look at your medical history. And then from there, they will decide whether or not they're going to issue a policy. So there are some conditions that they flat out automatically deny for. So if you answer yes to things like, you have any kind of a heart condition, um, typically if you're diabetic or you've ever had cancer treatment, regardless of if you're in remission or not, um, usually if you say yes to any of those, they automatically will say that they are not going to offer you a policy. And the same thing is true like further on, like if you try to enroll in Medicare, a Medigap plan later, um, it you will go through that medical underwriting. So it can be difficult, if not impossible, to get a Medigap plan depending on your medical situation. Um, so like that's kind of the long answer. So no, you don't have to have Medicare Advantage, um, but you have to kind of make a decision pretty early on on whether or not you want to go with Medicare Advantage or Medigap. And then um, to answer the question about changing your Medicare Advantage plans, yes, Medicare, um, if you already have a Medicare Advantage plan, you have two open enrollment periods. The first one is the one coming up October 15th through December 7th. So that's anyone can cho choose a Medicare Advantage plan during this enrollment period that's about to start. Um, the second one that runs January 1st through March 31st is specifically for people who already have a Medicare Advantage plan. That allows you to change to a different Medicare Advantage plan at that time or to go back to original Medicare. So yes, you can change and or go back to during that time period. Great, thank you, Stephanie. Um, there's a couple more that are related to um, Medicare Part C, so I'll give them to you together. Um, it says, does North Dakota accept 
the Part C plans that are advertised on TV often. And um, maybe I'll let you answer that one first before I go to the next one. So that's kind of a can of worms. So a lot of the plans that you see that are being advertised on TV, the commercials that you see, those are typically national plans. A lot of them are actually like um, third party people that are um, basically agents or brokers that are selling Medicare Advantage plans. So they usually have like a group of plans that they're selling from. Um, the unfortunate thing which we have notified Medicare about is that a lot of the things that they tell you on those commercials are not necessarily true in the state of North Dakota. So specifically, like they will advertise that um, they have plans that you can get your groceries paid for and stuff like that. There really aren't any plans in the state of North Dakota that specifically pay for groceries. The other thing that they advertise for is that you can get like your utilities paid for, like your heating and stuff like that costs paid for. That's not something that we we don't have a plan like that in the state of North Dakota. Um, there are some DSNP plans, like I said, that are specifically for people that are dual eligible for Medicare and Medicaid that have some additional benefits for those people that qualify for Medicaid. Um, but by and large, there are, if you call one of those numbers, they have to have, in order to sell a Medicare Advantage plan in the state of North Dakota, they have to have an agent that's actually licensed to sell in the state of North Dakota. So usually they will have at least a few plans that they can sell in the state of North Dakota. They might not be specifically what you see in the commercials though. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, next question. I'm confused. Is the Medicare cost plan different than the supplement that you need to have? Um, it's the Medicare cost plan is typically classified as a hybrid. So it's when you look, for instance, if you were to use the Medicare plan finder yourself on Medicare.gov, you will actually see the Medicare cost plans. If you choose like the Medicare Advantage option, you'll also see the Medicare cost plans that are available in your area in that same, like under that same listing. But they're a hybrid insofar as um, they have benefits similar to Medicare Advantage plans that other original Medicare doesn't. Um, but they also have the option, like I said, if you go to an out-of-network provider or sometimes if the service isn't covered, like for instance, um, an example of that is skilled nursing facility, um, so usually, or home health care, it might not be specifically covered by the Medicare cost plan once you reach a certain limit, but then it would revert back to original Medicare. So it has both coverage that in, in a Medicare cost plan, you can have coverage both through the company that you choose with your cost plan and also through original Medicare, but it's not the same as a Medigap plan. Um, Medigap supplement plans are really what's a, considered a true supplement because they always pay secondary to Medicare. Okay, thank you. Um, and then maybe just circling back to this insurability, it says, do you have to prove insurability changing back to Medigap from Medicare Advantage if it was over 11 months? Yes. So if you go, like if you're on your Medicare Advantage plan for your first, the first time, this is the first time you've ever chosen a Medicare Advantage plan and you have that 12 month trial period, if you go beyond the 11 months and you decide that you want to go back to the Medigap plan that you previously had, then you would have to do the medical underwriting. So you would have to fill out the questionnaire and then potentially submit your medical records for review. Okay, thank you. Another question, I'm, I maybe need more information for, from this person. If you are retiring September of 2025, do you need to sign up during open enrollment? No. So, I mean, so if you're retiring, you have all your own special initial enrollment period. So your grant, like that would be your initial enrollment period, or sometimes it's considered a special enrollment period because it's after you turn 65. But when you retire, you're given a specific period of time to enroll in any of the Medicare plans, including original Medicare, Part D prescription plans, Medigap, and or Medicare Advantage. So um, there's different for each, um, like for original Medicare, you have a seven month window, which includes um, like your three months before you retire, the month of, and the three months after. Um, for Medicare Advantage, that is the same thing. 
um, for Part D prescription plans, it's much shorter window. Um, if you choose a standalone Part D plan, you only have 63 days from the day that you lose coverage under your employer plan to enroll in a Part D plan. And for Medigap, it's six months from the date that you retire and or first start Part B. Okay, thank you. Um, another question, um, can you repeat the travel or live part-time in another state? Uh, as it relates to um, the different plans. So for if, for instance, if you live in a different state part of the year or you plan on traveling significantly outside of North Dakota, um, there are a couple ways you can do that. Medicare Advantage is a little more difficult to work with when it comes to traveling and living in a different state part of the year because you have to make sure that the providers that you are going to see in that other area are also going to be in network with that specific Medicare Advantage plan. Um, and then also, if you have Medigap, Medigap is easier to use when it comes to traveling or living in a different state, because as long as the provider accepts Medicare, they will also accept your plan, your Medigap plan, regardless of what area of the country you live in or travel into. So it's kind of, it's something to consider if you know that you're going to be traveling a lot after you retire, or if you know that you're going to live in a different state. It's not unheard of. There are some people that have Medicare Advantage plans that do that. Um, they just know that they need to be more careful about using providers that are in network. Okay, thank you. And I think this one would be directed to to Brenda. It says, is the app, the SMP app specific for each state? Um, can I change the app name to the South Dakota SMP for my neighbors in South Dakota? So the the North Dakota SMP app is specific just to North Dakota. There are only, as I am aware, only two states, North Dakota and Ohio, that have their own um, app available. There is going to be a national app that is being worked on that uh, that is being in the process of being developed. And so once that comes out, I'll actually put that information on the NDSMP app. The, as far as I know, there are no other states like South Dakota that has that has an app available for its consumers. So just the North Dakota and Ohio. Okay, thank you very much, Brenda. You know, the, the other two, there's two remaining questions and it's really about the resources here about whether this recording is going to be available and whether the slides will be available. So I'll just speak to that a little bit. Um, this recording will be available on the um, NDSU Extension YouTube channel. So um, it'll be youtube.com slash at NDSU Extension. And I, I know our presenters have said that we could share the slides. We will get them up on the Extension Aging Well uh, page um, at least for a while. And uh, then you can find them there. So just NDSU Extension Aging Well and the slides will be there as well. So I think that we have answered all of the questions um, that we have and just perfect timing, it's 11.29. And I will just um, start my video there. And, and I just want to thank uh, Stephanie and Brenda for such a great job. This was just a wealth of information on Medicare, open enrollment, um, the nuances of the Medicare Advantage plans versus original Medicare, which is um, very complex and just learning how to protect ourselves from Medicare fraud. So we thank you all uh, for sharing that information and sharing um, you know that we can post this. I know a lot of people wanted to be able to go and watch this video that couldn't make it to this this webinar time. So um, my thanks to you know your organization's insurance department and uh, the senior Medicare Patrol uh, for for wanting to present this to the the folks here in North Dakota. So thanks to all of you who um, attended this webinar. And again, at the the recording should be up, I think, probably by tomorrow. And just thanks to Scott Swanson, our electronic media, media specialist, who's um, been so helpful in making sure this webinar was uh, available and, and went smoothly today. So thanks, everyone, for participating, and I hope that you have a great rest of the day. Thank you. Thank you so yep. much. Bye-bye.